My name is Jonathan Biznet, and today I'm going to uh, show you a little bit about a circuit uh, that behaves as an A-stable multivibrator. And basically what this circuit is, is it's really um, two smaller uh, pieces that are connected in such a way that they're mirror images of each other almost. Uh, I guess that would be the best way to explain it, and I'll show you on the diagram here shortly. Uh, but what you really have are two pieces of the circuit that are that support two states, and neither of those states is stable. So what happens is it gets into one state, which is when one of the LEDs goes on, and immediately starts uh, working towards the point that it will flip states and the other one will come on, in which case it'll start working towards flipping states again. So it never will stay in one state very long. The length of time that the LEDs stay on or the speed at which they flash is determined by the, the uh, value of the capacitors and the resistors used to uh, charge and discharge them. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, show you the overall circuit. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. And I'm going to, uh, in just a moment, take you in and focus on just half the circuit to give you a better feel for exactly how it behaves. And once you understand it and realize that it's, it's the same circuit, back to back, mirrored, uh, you should then be able to get a better understanding of why this oscillates back and forth between the two different states. All right, so let's take a look at just a portion of this circuit to try to understand exactly what's going on. So we're going to take this portion starting from 5 volts, coming down through the 1K resistor, through the LED, over here across the uh, capacitor. We're also going to include this 15K ohm resistor, Coming down, we're going to go into this transistor here to ground. I'm also going to put in a 1K uh, resistor and uh, an LED up here, but just that portion of it. And I'm going to simulate this transistor with just a connection, a wire connection between here and ground. So basically we've got this piece coming over and down, we've got that and we'll connect to ground here and we've got this 15k so just that portion of the circuit and let's take a look and see what that does here's our circuit and I'll do my best to kind of give you a picture of this so you can see what's going on here I've got a uh, resistor here from the positive rail coming down a 1k ohm resistor it's coming through this LED in this blue LED and into one of the the uh, leads of the capacitor through the capacitor and then what you'll see is the other lead of the capacitor is actually going to the base of this uh, this transistor of which there's then also a 15k ohm resistor off the base going to the positive rail uh, additionally I've got this black wire here connecting the emitter of the transistor to ground and then over here we've got a 1k ohm resistor going through uh, an LED uh, to the collector. Uh, and that basically simulates our circuit along with this yellow wire here, which I'm going to use to uh, operate as though the transistor were on or off simply by plugging it into ground or uh, not plugging it into ground. So this, this should basically... <clears throat> simulate that portion of the circuit I was telling you about coming down across there's our 15k ohm here's the base of our transistor down to ground and then of course there's that other LED at this point I have a red one in here just so we can see the difference all right I've moved the light away a little bit so that hopefully this will make it a little easier to see what's going on but let's Let's act as though that transistor had been turned on. If I basically take and plug this into ground, you'll notice the blue LED comes on, the red one goes off and then comes back on again after a short period of time. Let me do that again. Plug it into ground, off, comes back on. One more time. Off, comes back on. All right. What's, uh, what's happening here is that when we first 
plug that into ground, we pull the one side of that capacitor basically to ground, and that's what I was talking about in the circuit here at this point right here. We're, we're taking that point to ground, which is pulling that side of the capacitor to ground. Once we do it, prior to, uh, prior to this transistor being on, this side of the capacitor would have had a voltage, well, basically with Q1 off, we're looking at about a 2.3 volt drop across this LED. Uh, there'll only be current flowing for a short time while this transistor charges. So let's, for the most part, ignore that and say, all right, once that, that initial charge time occurs, you're really looking at no current flowing. So there'll be no real drop across this resistor. You've got a, the, the drop of about 2.3 volts that you're going to lose across this LED. And over here at this point, you're looking at 0 0.7 volts. That's basically driving the other transistor. So between here and here, you're looking at a 2 volt uh, charge that's appearing on this capacitor. So basically with the 2 volts here, when this, when this transistor gets turned on, this point goes to zero, you now are looking at negative 2 volts because of this transistor over to here, pushing this down to under, uh, actually it ends up being about negative 1.4 volts here, uh, which shuts off this other transistor, which turns off the LED, it just totally shuts it off, and then it begins to charge up uh, this from that negative 1.4 volts back towards 1.7. It's basically charging through this junction here. And eventually, once it gets up to 0 0.7, it'll turn this transistor on, take this one to zero, to ground, take this to negative 1.4 volts, and shut this transistor off. So this, this loop through here, sorry, this loop through here is what causes that oscillation, so to speak. And if you look at these, these are mirrored circuits. So you've got the same thing over here that you had here in reverse. You've got the opposite transistors. So once we understand what this piece does, then it's easy to see what this piece does and realize that they work in opposition. And these two points are kind of the triggers. So when this one goes on, this goes negative 1.4 and gradually charges to 0 0.7. When it hits 0 0.7, that turns this transistor on, takes this to 0, takes this to negative 1.4, and turns this transistor off, and it starts charging here. So that's what's kind of going on in this circuit, back and forth. So let's take a look at the scope on this and see if I can help you kind of grasp what's going on here. I've caught a picture of it when I uh, basically plugged it in and uh, into ground, in essence simulating turning that one transistor on and then pulled it out. And what you'll see, if we can get in here, and I, I realize the colors are a little hard to see, but this is blue here, and it drops down and all. The blue line is the one that is, uh, let's see, it's uh, best to show you, it's this point right here. This is where the blue uh, probe is connected, and the yellow probe is connected here. So basically we're looking across this capacitor. So if we go back here and look, you can see the yellow line is running. The, the graticules are set at, uh, we're using this as zero, and they're set at 500 millivolts. So we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 2.8, about 2.8 volts uh, is sitting there uh, when the transistor is off. Uh, it, yes, is off. Uh, once I turn it on, you notice that it drops to zero, because basically that's what's sitting on the that side of the transistor. We go to zero, and then when I unplug it, you'll see that it you can see the characteristic capacitor charging curve. If we look at the other side of the capacitor, now this is the side as we talked about here. This is uh, 
this point here again. If we look at this side of it, you'll see that we're running at about 0.7, because again, 500 plus a little bit, 0.7. And as soon as we take the, the, the transistor on and take it to ground, you'll notice that this one drops way down. Right, let's change that a little bit. Not oh, wrong way. All right, now we're looking at uh, one volt per graticule for the blue. And so you'll see we have 0.7, we have one volt, and then we have, oh, almost another half. So probably a total of about 2.2 volts difference between where it was at 0.7 and down here. So that's your negative 1.4 volts that it's now showing. And you'll see that it then starts charging up in actually a linear fashion because it is, uh, in essence, uh, charging through the flow of that transistor uh, in a way almost like a current sink. So it's going to be a linear charge. And then once it gets up to 0 0.7, that's when, uh, under the normal circuit, that's when the other one would kick in. But uh, either way, what you'll see, this is the point at which the red LED in my sample piece comes back on. And then when I pull the... Uh, pull the pin out, in essence shutting the transistor off, you'll notice that the uh, the blue line stays at 0 0.7. That's where it was. That's what what it uh, it's driving the other transistor with. But at this point, now we're going back and looking at this portion of the circuit here. Once I pull this off and this transistor shuts off, basically what you've got is 5 volts through 1K through the LED through the capacitor to this point down to 0 0.7 to ground. So this capacitor at that point when I pull it starts charging up again uh, in this sense heading back towards that uh, 2 volts or so that we saw across it when Q1 is off. And thus getting ready for the next time when this one hits uh, Basically getting ready for when this one hits 0 0.7 and turns this back on, this will go negative, shut this guy off. So that's what you see on the scope. Uh, I would say that's uh, kind of what to be what we should expect. Uh, what I will do is uh, in just a moment I'll show you what you see on the scope when I put it into the full uh, uh, a stable multi vibrator instead of just half of it back up and you can see that uh, the uh, LEDs are flashing back and forth just like they did earlier. And when we go over here and look at the scope, you'll see the uh, basically the same characteristic pattern I was showing you before uh, for the single portion. Uh, the yellow line, the one at the top here, you'll notice you can see when that transistor turns on that drops back here to actually a little above ground, but it drops back here. Uh, and when it does, you'll notice the other side of that capacitor goes negative and then starts charging up. Once it hits zero, 0 0.7 and turns the other transistor on, we start charging the, the initial capacitor back up until it, until it hits the, uh, the aspect that it's at 0 0.7 and drops. So that's what's going to happen. It's just going to keep bouncing back and forth and back and forth. Now, admittedly, here you're only looking at one side of the multi vibrator. I only have two channels on the scope, so I can only show you one side at a time, but uh, that's what we're looking at. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully, this made sense uh, and you uh, can you understand now why the multi vibrator works the way it does. Thank you.